Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode 12 of The Soul Forge podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Sean, and today we're going to talk about birthdays. Why are we going to talk about birthdays? Well, I just had mine the other day and I turned the big 4-1. One One more year until I get 42. The answer to everything. That's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference in case you didn't know. But uh, what about birthdays specifically and why are we going to talk about them? Well, the last episode was uh, all about loss and it was a pretty heavy episode and I wanted to turn it around and talk about something fun. Birthdays are fun. Let's talk about those. Yay! Birthdays have always had uh, a lot of significance to my own life because uh, they're they're like markers, anniversaries, that kind of thing. I'm, I've always been good at remembering specific instances when things happened. Not necessarily the details about things. Like uh, people will say, hey, remember when we did this or did that and the other thing? And, and I don't. But if you ask me about a date, I can definitely tell you something about that. So let me think about some significant birthday dates that I have had. I, I remember when I had turned 25, that was the quarter life or quarter century mark, and I was feeling, well, like uh, like I needed to progress somewhere in my life and it needed some really good progress. So what did I do? I was working at Mike's Mart. Back then, minimum wage was 685 and I was, I was going to be 25 and I couldn't be making minimum wage at that age. That was just unacceptable. So I said to my boss at the time, I said, what was her name? Uh, Christina. I said, Christina, listen, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be 25 years old and I, I can't be making 685 anymore. I, I can't make the minimum wage. That's, that's unacceptable to me. I said, I don't even care if you just give me a penny raise. It doesn't matter what you do. Just something so that I'm not making minimum wage. And lo and behold, she did. She gave me a raise up to $7, even though I'd only been there since, I think, May or something. So May to September. I hadn't even been there six months, but she, but I was a good worker. And uh, she gave me a 15-cent raise, and I wasn't making minimum wage anymore, and I was happy. Now, listeners to the podcast, long-time listeners, may have heard that Back in the day, I used to write poetry, and I actually was uh, looking through it the other day, and I came across a poem that I wrote the day before my 25th birthday, contemplating the nature of existence and, and working a minimum wage and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and read this poem to you. It was uh, written September 2nd, 2001, and I called it How Convenient. It seems I stand here every day, thinking the same thoughts I thought the day before. The only thing I know for sure is that something has to change. It is one day before my 25th birthday. What have I accomplished with all that time? I'm at work at a convenience store. I make minimum wage. Something definitely has to change. I can feel the stirrings of change. I hope it's not just hope. The situation has gone beyond hoping. The only thing to do is make the alterations I need myself. I know change is only a state of mind. As I stare out of these store windows, I can see that that is where my future is. Until that not too distant future. Hi, will there be anything else today? I, I guess uh, I was, I must have handled a lot of change because I used that word way too much in that poem. But anyway, just something interesting I came across. And yeah, I was very con contemplative at that time. Uh, then what uh, other significant birthdays do I have? Well, of course, when I turned 16 and went for my driver's license and so on. I remember I practiced driving all the time and I was like, oh, can't wait to get my license so I don't have to drive anymore. That, that's an actual thought that I had. Uh, when I turned 19, uh, it was my first year of university, and 
course, my birthday is September 3rd, so it's always during Labor Day. And uh, we were all there for Frosh Week, and I remember being at a fire pit in the back of the school where we were all hanging out. Somebody mentioned to somebody else that it was my birthday, and they handed me a, a or threw me a bottle, a can of Coors Light. And of course, I'm not a big fan of beer, so I put that put that beer can in my pocket and took it home with me. And I put it in my university memory box, and I still have it. I haven't seen it in a few years. I hope it hasn't exploded. But that's the kind of thing that I did. Everything had significance. Everything had meaning. I'm always uh, keeping everything for history and posterity and all that kind of good stuff. So that's what I do. I keep papers. I keep keep everything. Just because you never know when uh, when I might become famous and have to... Uh, have a museum put built in my honor at the place that I grew up in and of course they're going to want to have all my uh, personal effects and all that good stuff anyway I, I, I was in uh, university for an English major and you hear a lot about all the old famous authors who have museums in their offices and stuff and I always thought well that would be pretty cool to have and I, maybe that's partly why I started writing the poetry I don't I don't really know other birthdays that I had, when I turned 30, I was dreading that for about six months before it, and oh, I couldn't stand where I was working. I was working at a call center, and I'd been there since, uh, since the fall of 2001. So summer of 2006, just before my 30th birthday, was horrendous. You can ask Trish. I was insufferable. Damn it, Jim, what the hell is the matter with you? Other people have birthdays. Why are we treating yours like a funeral? Well, I don't want to be lectured. What the hell do you want? It took everything in me just to go to work every day because I'd been at the call center for nearly five years. It was soul-sucking. So, of course, I was just about to turn 30 and I was starting to look for another job. I applied at the post office. I applied here. I applied there. I applied everywhere. And slightly after my 30th birthday, I got a job as a delivery coordinator at Home Depot, which turned out to be even worse than the call center. But that's not what this is about. What this is about is my 30th birthday party. My mom and my brother came up from out of town. Uh, everybody that I knew pretty much came to my house. And what did Trish do? She threw me a parade because I, I don't like going to parades because yeah, it's always cold. It's usually the Christmas parade. I don't, I don't mind summer parades, but the Christmas parade is always cold or it's always raining. And so what did she do for my 30th birthday? She threw one for me. She got her dad's truck and her dad's boat, put me in the back of the boat, drove the truck around and uh, everybody that came to the party also drove behind the car or the, the drove behind the truck with the boat and I was in the boat and I was throwing candy out into the uh, the streets just like they do in a parade and uh, that was a lot of fun actually uh, what else what else do I have last year I turned 40 and that was a huge deal my other brother my, my brother uh, once again came actually my, both of my brothers both brothers came from out of town uh, my stepdad came from out of town it was a lot of fun, actually. All kinds of people were there, had a great big barbecue, got all kinds of gifts, got really spoiled, actually. It was super fantastic. And 40, surprisingly, was not a big deal. 30 was horrendous. 25 was atrocious. 40? Meh, I was okay. And 41 that just passed a few days ago? Not bad either. So it got me thinking, why do we even celebrate birthdays in the first place? Like, what's the significance? It's, it's just an arbitrary date that we happen to be born. We went around the sun, another one revolution. What's the big deal? Well, I found an article, and it says that although research on the exact origin of birthdays and birthday cakes remain inconclusive, there's enough of a consensus to piece together an approximate history. So they start off saying that Egyptians started the party. When pharaohs were crowned in ancient Egypt, they were considered to have transformed into gods, so they had a celebration for that. Uh, and scholars pointed to the Bible's reference of a pharaoh's birthday as the earliest known mention of a birthday celebration around 3000 BCE. But it wouldn't have been a, a birth birth, it would have been the birth as a god. And then we go on to the Greeks who added candles to cakes. They offered moon-shaped cakes to Artemis, a form of tribute to the lunar goddess. To recreate the radiance of the moon and her perceived beauty, Greeks lit candles and put them on cakes for a glowing effect. And the Greeks most likely took the idea of a birthday celebration from the Egyptians. And then we've got the Romans, who were the first to celebrate uh, birthdays for the common man, but not women, just men. The prevailing opinion seems to be that the Romans were the first civilization to celebrate birthday, birthdays for non-religious figures. Romans would celebrate birthdays for friends and families, while the government created public holidays to observe the birthdays of more famous citizens. Uh, those celebrating a 50th birthday party would actually receive a special cake made of wheat flour, 
olive oil, honey, and grated cheese. Doesn't sound very good. Uh, and it tells us here in the article that female birthdays weren't celebrated until around the 12th century. So that's a long time. Christians initially considered birthdays to be a pagan ritual because of the belief that people or humans are, are born with original sin and birthdays were tied to pagan gods. The Christian church uh, considered birthday celebrations evil. But then something changed and around the 4th century, uh, Christians changed their mind, began to celebrate the birthday of Jesus as, as the holiday of Christmas. And the new celebration was accepted partly to recruit those already celebrating the Roman holiday of Saturnalia. Turns out, the birthday cake as we know it today was actually invented by German bakers. In the late 18th century, Germany created the closest prerequisite to the contemporary birthday party. Uh, the celebration was held for German children, or Kinder, and involved birthday cakes and candles, and kids got one candle for each year they'd been alive, plus another to symbolize the hope of living for at least one more year. Also, blowing out candles and making a wish was part of these early celebrations. So that's almost exactly what we have today. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution, we all got delicious cakes. Because for quite a while, birthday celebrations involving sugary cakes were only available to the very wealthy. The necessary ingredients were considered a luxury. But with the Industrial Revolution, not only did the required ingredients become more abundant, but bakeries also started offering pre-made cakes at lower prices due to these advances in the mass production, which the Industrial Revolution is, of course, known for. And then we have the birthday song, which turns out it was kind of a remix. So I'll just read it as it says here. In 1893, Patty and Mildred Hill wrote a song they called Good Morning to All, which was intended to be sung by students before classes began. The song eventually caught on across America, giving rise to a number of variations. Robert Coleman eventually published a songbook in 1924, adding a few extra lyrics that would quickly come to overshadow the original lines. The new rendition became the version we all know now as Happy Birthday to You. So there you go. That's a little bit of birthday news. What do you guys have to say about your birthday? Do you, do you celebrate it? Is it a big deal? Do you care? I, I know uh, some people really, really go out on their birthday, go all out. They, they celebrate for days and days before and days and days afterwards. And other, other people I know, they don't even acknowledge it or they barely acknowledge it. Like my buddy Johan, his, uh, his birthday comes along and he nope, doesn't have a party, doesn't want a cake, doesn't want any gifts. Uh, I wished him a happy birthday this year and uh, six hours later he said thanks because I, I think I texted him because he was at work. But no, he, doesn't, he doesn't care. And, and then there's me who, uh, who loves a good birthday party. In fact, this coming weekend I'm having a bunch of people over and we're going to have a barbecue and a fire in the backyard. And am I going to have gifts? Don't care. Doesn't matter. In fact, in the Facebook invitation that I wrote, I said, presents are not required, but your presents are, or your presence is. Anyway, come. I don't need stuff. I just want you to come. So I'm going to see how many people come, and we'll have drinks, and we'll have food, and hot dogs, hamburgers, and a nice fire. It's not supposed to rain, so it's even better. That's what I like on my birthday, or for my birthday celebration. Just, just friends and family, and hang out, and talk, and drink, and just be, you know? That's what's important. Oh, by the way, Thank you for this. I know of your fondness for antiques. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Message, Spock? None that I'm conscious of. Except, of course, happy birthday. Surely the best of times. So what do you folks do? Do you care? Do you celebrate? Do you have any special or interesting or embarrassing birthday stories that you'd like to relate? I'd like to hear them. You can, uh, you can email me, soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. You can send in a, uh, a written email. You, you can send an MP3 recording that I can play on the show. I, I just want to hear from you. I don't care how. Maybe uh, maybe tweet me at SoulForgePod. That would be awesome. Or if you haven't, join the Facebook group. Well, that would also be terrific. Facebook.com slash SoulForgePodcast. I just want to hear from you. And that's about it. That's all I've got to say about birthdays. Just a quick little uh, discussion, I guess. Just to tell you that, hey, it was my birthday. I've been thinking about birthdays. I'm doing okay. Everything's fine. Uh, I, I do want to thank a good friend of the show, Dan, for uh, sending me a, a tweet the other day saying that he appreciated what it took to record the loss episode. And yeah, it, it took a lot out of me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was hard to do, but it needed to be done because I'm, I'm here to, to lay my soul on the line and give you guys a different perspective and hopefully help you out. And if it helps you out, I, I'm grateful for that. That's 
fantastic. So uh, once again, thanks for tuning in to Soul Forge Podcast. If you haven't, leave a five-star review in the iTunes store and tell all your friends about us. And remember, life is like a book. Some chapters are sad, some are happy, and some are exciting. But if you never turn the page, you'll never know what the next chapter has in store for you. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Soul Forge. I hope you found some value in it. To contact the show, please email soulforgepodcast at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at soulforgepod. We are Soul Forge Podcast on Facebook and you can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Please spread the Soul Forge word by rating and reviewing us in iTunes and by telling everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by The Forge. <laughs>